Welcome to the tutorial on how to use Rhino and Grasshopper with City Engine. Today we're going to be looking at one of Esri's newest plugins called Puma. Puma is a plugin that enables City Engine rules to be imported within Rhino and Grasshopper. We're also going to look at another plugin called Heron that allows raster imagery to be imported from ArcGIS Online into Rhino. To download Puma, you have to go to the Food for Rhino website and type in Puma and then download and follow the installation instructions. If you follow the download instructions here, you can also see that there is a video that highlights some of the functionality of Puma. And if we go to the GitHub page for Puma, you can see more detailed description of how to use Puma within Rhino and Grasshopper. The other tool that we're going to download that we're going to need for this tutorial is called Heron. Heron can also be downloaded from the Food for Rhino website. However, because of recent changes to ArcGIS Online, we are going to have to download the newest Heron plugin through the Rhino Package Manager. To do this, once we're in Rhino, we type in Package Manager, and you can search for Heron. You can see here that the latest version is being downloaded, and we'll click on Install. This will download the latest installation of Heron, which includes a fix that will correct a connectivity error between Heron and ArcGIS Online. So let's get started. The first thing that we need to do is we need to set the Earth anchor point in Rhino. An Earth anchor point is needed in order to set a model's position and the latitude and longitude for mapping applications. So to do this, what we need to do is we need to use Heron's tool called RestGeoCode and set Earth anchor point. I'm going to drag in the REST service geocode tool here. The geocode tool takes an input, which is an address, which we just type in through a panel input. For the area of interest that I want to focus in for this tutorial, I'm going to be focusing on a place called Commissioner Street in Toronto. If we look at the output for what has been created through this tool here, we can see that there are two entries that are going to come up for Commissioner Street. Both of these entries include the title and the street name, Commissioner Street. They have different postal codes as well as slightly different longitude and latitudes. I know for this area that I'm going to be focusing in on that I need to use the second record. And so I'm going to take these values for the second record to use as the earth anchor point entry. In order to do this, what I need to do is use a tool called branch. As you can see from this description here, the tree branch retrieves a specific branch from a data tree. So what we're looking at here is the data tree above, and we're going to take the tree branch in position two, being this record here, to extract those values to use as input on the earth anchor point. So the data tree that we're inputting here is the latitude data tree. And we're going to take the path of that data tree. And that path is going to be 0, 1 record. So I'm just going to create a panel here that says 0, 1. Input that in as the path. And if we look at the output here now, we can see that we've got here the latitude coordinates. I'm going to do the same thing here for the longitude. Oops. Take the longitude as the input, use the same path. And now we can see here that we have the longitude for the second record of Commissioner Street. So now that we have these two records of latitude and longitude, I'm going to use the set earth anchor point. And when I add in the set earth anchor point, we can see that it takes in three values. The first one is going to be the latitude value. So we're going to take the that branch value output and input that as latitude. We're going to take the second one of longitude and bring that in there. And we can see here that the set value is looking at a Boolean expression of true or false. And we're just going to say that we're going to say Boolean toggle. Double click this to set this to true. And now if we look at the output of what this has created, 
we'll see that we have a nice output here of latitude longitude for the second record Commissioner Street. The earth anchor point is now set within Grasshopper and Rhino. The next step of what we need to do is import imagery from ArcGIS Online into Rhino. To do this, we're going to use the REST raster tool. You can see that the REST raster tool has a variety of inputs that we need to bring in in order to properly import a raster imagery from ArcGIS Online. The first thing that I'm going to do is draw a curve in Rhino. I'm going to use this curve as the input boundary. I'm going to stick with the default resolution. You can see here that it's a 1024. And what we do need here is a URL to uh, bring in the imagery from ArcGIS Online. To do this, if I right click on the REST raster tool here, I can say create Esri raster source list. And what we end up getting here is a drop down where I can select the different imagery that I want to import into Rhino. So I'm going to stick with the Esri world imagery and I'm going to connect that in as the URL. There's a get statement here, which again is a Boolean asking if we want it to be true or false, pretty much asking if we want to run this tool. So I'm going to create a Boolean. I'm going to call this true. And now if I change the settings here to rendered in Rhino, I can see my area of interest that it has downloaded. So I can easily adjust this area to the area that I really want to focus in on by just dragging around this square. And this is around the area of Commissioner Street that I typed in for the Earth Anchor Point. So what I'm going to do is just make this area a bit larger. Oops. And this over here, just change the view. This is the area that I really want to focus in on for redeveloping. One thing that's interesting to see is if we look in the panel output here for the REST query, we can see that this link is created here, which is the call that is uh, that this tool is making to ArcGIS Online to extract the imagery. So if I were to copy all of the content here and go in my browser to this link, we can see the same imagery that's being downloaded here. However, in this case, it's not being projected as we see it in Rhino. Here it has been corrected. So now that we have our imagery, what I can start to do is I can start to design what my uh, redevelopment will look like in this area. So just for simplicity, all I'm going to do is to cr is create a few building footprints with a polyline. I'll select these uh, three footprints here, and I'm going to create a planar surface for all of those with the command planar surface at the top. If I switch back to wireframe for a second, we can see here that I've created now three planar surfaces, and these surfaces are going to be used for import into uh, the rule package tool that we're going to be using through Puma. So once Puma has been installed, you'll see that there is a new tab at the top of Grasshopper that's called Esri. And what I can do is I can bring in the Puma tool here. And the Puma tool asks for shapes and an RPK as well as a seed. And the seed isn't really necessary for what we're going to be doing today. But what we're interested in doing first is bringing in an RPK, which is a rule package. So the rule package takes an input, which we can bring in here called rule package. And in order to bring in a rule package, what we first need to do is either download a rule package that we can use within uh, Rhino. And if we wanted to just use something straight off the shelf, what we can do is go to this great website here called 3dcitymodels.esri.ca. And there are a variety of rule packages that you can download uh, directly from this website that you can use directly within City Engine or in this case within Rhino and Grasshopper. But what I want to show you today instead is that I'm going to actually export a rule package directly from City Engine. So here we are in City Engine, and what I've done is just drawn a simple um, shape in the, my middle of my scene here. 
And if I go into the help options in City Engine and I choose download tutorials and examples, I have the ability to download a variety of examples and tutorials that I can play around with in the City Engine interface. And one of the great things that comes with all of these tutorials and examples is sample scenes as well as rules that you can use in your existing projects. So I downloaded the project here called Example Planning 3 Zoning and Land Use. And if I expand the rules folder here, we can see that there is a rule that's called simplebuilding.cga. And if I drag that onto my shape, you can see that it starts to apply texturing and form to the rule. I'll change the height here just to 50 meters. And you can see I've made a very large building, but this is just an example here. But this is the rule that I now want to bring into uh, Rhino and Grasshopper. So what I want to do is I want to right click on the CGA rule. I'll say share as, and I'm going to export it as a rule package, which is the RPK. And I'm going to save the package to a file instead of uploading it to ArcGIS Online. I'll save it to a local folder on my desktop, or in this case, just to the default folder here. Make sure I click analyze to make sure that the rule package is okay. And then I will click share. I'll receive a message here saying that the rule package has been exported successfully, and now I can use the simple underscore building dot RPK as my input in Grasshopper as the rule package input. So coming back into Grasshopper here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to reference that rule package that was just exported. I'll right click on that and say set rule package. And now it's asking for the rule package that I just exported. So I'm going to select here simple building dot RPK and I'll connect that into the RPK input. And then I'm going to choose here uh, surfaces. I'm going to select multiple surfaces as my input. Say OK. So we can see here when I click on surfaces, they select in green. I'll drag that as the connection in shapes. And now that the shapes and the RPK are connected, when I zoom into this tool, you'll see a little uh, plus sign appears at the bottom. And this is only shown up when we zoom right into this tool here because of the dynamic zoom capabilities that this tool uses. So when I click on this tool, what I have now are options, which are the same options for the parameters that I can change on the right hand side here in City Engine. So what I'm going to do is select, for example, the total height parameter here. And I'll also choose a few more um, uh, parameters to bring in here. I'll choose uh, usage. I'll also choose facade display. And I'll choose roof form. So what I'm going to do now is just add in the height for all of my buildings as it will be a total height. I'm going to set my total height for all of my buildings to be 50 meters. We can see here that the buildings are being extruded downwards. So what we need to just do is use a flip command to just flip the surfaces and change the normals. So now the normals are flipped to the other orientation. And if I adjust the um, height sliders now, we can see that the buildings are parametrically being adjusted based off of that rule that I brought in. If we want to change the usage here, what I can do is I can look back at City Engine. I can see here that there are a few options for what the usage can be. I'm going to ch say that I want my usage for all of these buildings to be residential. So I'll bring that text entry into the usage value here. For the facade display, we can see here that there are five different options that this rule is allowing us to input. And I'm going to say uh, texture by usage is the value that I want. So I'm going to type in here texture by usage. 
drag that in. And then roof form allows us to choose from four different roof types. And I'm going to say that I want these buildings to have a flat roof. And now you can see there's not a whole lot happening in the preview, but what I can do is I can add in a preview output. The preview uh, output allows us to import geometry. So the geometry is going to be out the models that we use here, as well as the materials. Materials are going to be connected here. If I turn off this preview, we can see here that the buildings are being dynamically textured as they are according to the uh, usage. So if I change this, for example, to industrial, We can see the building texture changes. I'll change it back to residential. And I can change the height as well. And we can see there are dynamic changes occurring as I adjust that slider. And as I get lower, what's happening is the texturing is being adjusted to facilitate the lower height building. So if we go back into our rendered view, I'll expand grass wrap all the way here. We can now see that we have three buildings that are placed on site with aerial imagery that has been imported through ArcGIS Online. And we're now using some custom RPKs to generate built forms on our new site. So the last thing that we want to do is we want to bake all of our um, outputs so that we can use them now within the Rhino interface outside of Grasshopper. So all I need to do here is say bake. I'll say OK. I'll do the same for the raster. I'm going to bake that and say OK. And now I have full access to using and modifying my buildings with textures within the Rhino interface outside of Grasshopper. If you want to download additional models that you can use within the Rhino and Grasshopper interface, you can check out the 3dmodels.esri.ca website for some great downloads and instructions on how to use City Engine rules, and continue to explore the City Engine rules and tutorial downloads, as I showcased before, to explore all sorts of different examples and tutorials that you can export as RPKs into your Grasshopper Rhino instance. This concludes the tutorial on how to use Rhino and Grasshopper with City Engine. You can check out more resources at our website at hed.esri.ca slash resource finder.